Well, tonight, me and my son had an opportunity to go watch Oklahoma and Kansas play at Gaylord Memorial. Um, an opportunity to get to spend some time with my kid, who's now 11, plays the game, loves the game, and tonight we got to watch the game in person. And besides, great opportunity, too, because, you know, tickets for a game like this far cheaper than what you would normally go pay for an OU game. So we took advantage of the opportunity, even though we decided, hey, you know, game's 49-3, to several minutes to go third quarter. Let's go ahead and take the elevator now at the stadium, make our way to the car, go stop by McDonald's, eat, and then we can get home, which is not far away from the stadium, by the way, for yours truly and the family, and the game's probably still going to be going. And, of course, it was. And, of course, um, I'll tell you what happened that did not make me happy at all late in the fourth quarter listening to the game. But I'll get into that later. If you did watch Oklahoma, Kansas, um, you know that after 15 minutes, you know, Kansas came ready to play and uh, defensively did a good job on the Sooners. In fact, Oklahoma hardly had the ball in the first quarter. I think they maybe had it half a dozen plays, maybe a few more than six plays, but not much more. I mean, Kansas held the ball most of the first quarter thanks to Cozart and being able to, you know, run out of third down situations. You know, Kansas was solid on third down in the first quarter, and they had one long drive, and I think that ate up about eight minutes of the clock after D.D. Westbrook ran a long punt back for a touchdown. Um, Kansas ate over half of the quarter's clock, got a field goal out of it, and from a pace perspective, the game was going Kansas' way, even though I knew they threw an interception. Um, a badly thrown ball by Cozart in which Jordan Thomas was able to catch the underthrown pass uh, near the goal line. And really, that was Kansas's best shot at a touchdown in the contest. So first quarter was sloppy for the Sooners. Couldn't run the ball in the first quarter. Really couldn't run the ball in the first half. It was not a big night for Joe Mixon. But yeah, feeling that the Kansas defense was really honed in on him. And they did a good job on him. But of course, the problem was they didn't consider any anybody else, especially uh, D.D. Uh, Westbrook. And, you know, Andrews had a good night, too, for the Sooners. But after a first quarter that was sluggish, to put it politely, uh, second quarter, Oklahoma proved that while Kansas played hard and their horses in the Big 12, Oklahoma proved that they could play just as hard and be thoroughbreds. And just like in the horse race, thoroughbreds are going to beat your traditional horses. And in this case, um, the Sooners were kicking in that second period, outscoring the Jayhawks 21 to nothing, and it was fairly, you know, over after that. You might remember yours truly saying that, you know, during the weekly matchup show, my preview of Oklahoma, Kansas, that the game will start at 6 on Saturday night and, for all intents and purposes, be over by 6.45. Well, the quote Clint Eastwood from Heartbreak Ridge, so I can't tell time, so I lied. <laughs> um, it was basically over at 7.30, okay, so my timing was off. But the result is identical to what we all thought would happen. Um, first quarter was not what we thought. 73 Sooners, 28 to 3 Oklahoma up at halftime. And really, the only exciting part of the game left was watching uh, the regular OU as well as the alumni OU band uh, perform a few ballots. Okay, so that was really it as far as the entertainment back because um, the second quarter was all Oklahoma, and the third quarter was even more of a landslide with OU outscoring KU. 28-0. Kansas, again, I, I don't think they lack the effort uh, to play college football. They, they just don't have the talent. They don't have the stamina. It's a 60-minute game, not a 15-minute game. And even though that opening quarter was not OU's best, um, I really thought that second quarter uh, they showed everybody why they were such a, a huge favorite to beat Kansas. 12th one in a row, by the way, over the Jayhawks. Mayfield, I thought, uh, played a, a terrific game. It wasn't one of his best because he did have some passes that he would have loved to have had back. He had at least a couple in which he had, you know, uh, Mark Andrews, the tight end wide open, but overshot him. And he wasn't getting help, too, from um, his receiving core at times, was Mayfield. But the offensive line, I thought, again, was, was, was good as far as pass protection, as far as run blocking. We've seen him play better. And defensively, uh, I liked what I saw with all you much better this week than it was last week against Texas Tech. But I'm also realistic in knowing that no matter how well uh, the Oklahoma defense played, and I thought they played a real good game, um, especially pass defense-wise, and and we'll get into more of the run defense later. Um, one thing I will say, though, it's Kansas, okay? So your barometer for overall improvement from one game to the next really can't be measured. 
because Kansas just doesn't have the speed and they don't have the athletes that the Sooners have. So you can't really uh, determine how well Oklahoma improved. Now, the thing you come away from a game like this is trying to win those mini battles. Um, you know, play better coverage. Have better tackling. Tackling in the first quarter, I thought was just like the, the tackling against Texas Tech last week. I thought it was poor, but it got better as the game wore along. And as far as the physical shape of both teams, Oklahoma really stood out because as the game progressed from one quarter to the next, uh, the Sooners would continue to pull away on the scoreboard where it really, really mattered. But Mayfield, um, four touchdown passes. You know, Didi Westbrook was his favorite target once again, but again, using Basquin. You know, using Dimitri Flowers out of the backfield also, too. Um, of course, Mark Andrews, who made one heck of a juke move um, in the second quarter. And you might have seen uh, the D.D. Westbrook catch that made it 14-3 to Sooners. Once that happened, once it got to 14-3, to uh, you had a feeling that the route was going to be on because you just knew with Kansas having no ground attack whatsoever throughout the game that it could not be – just Cozart's arm in Kansas leading the way. Um, in fact, really the biggest running threat all night was the quarterback, Cozart, who in the first half was successful on scrambles, but the Sooners would apply additional pressure in the second half, and Cozart wasn't, wasn't getting those runs anymore. In fact, you know, uh, Kansas had a couple of turnovers, and one was converted um, into a touchdown in that third period. Um, so slow start for the Sooners in this game, but again, Oklahoma proved that it's a 60-minute game, not a 15-minute game. Kansas had one good quarter, that opening quarter, and then OU turned out the lights from quarters two to four. So the Sooners, as expected, you know, when 56-3, a lot of the backups, third stringers, saw a lot of playing time as, as we thought that was going to be the case. And the Sooners, um, oh yeah, this is what I wanted to talk about. Um, listening to the game, I've already eaten at, eaten at McDonald's after leaving in the second half, game still going, and... OU's defense, I, I couldn't believe that Capri Doucette was still out there. He gets called for targeting. Okay, he gets called for targeting, and he's ejected from the game. But according to the NCAA rules, he has to miss the first half of the next game, which for the Sooners will be Thursday night in Ames, Iowa. And I did say Thursday, they'll play Thursday the 3rd in Ames against the Iowa State Cyclones. So Capri Doucette can't play in the first half because of the targeting um, against Kansas on Saturday. And then um, hearing about Curtis Bolton, um, his injury, don't know the, the extent of it. It happened, I believe, on, on the play before the targeting. Uh, so not exactly the way you want to end a 56-3 game, okay? Injury is never good at any time, and also, too, neither is getting a player kicked out of the game. But, of course, the timing of it really is a head-scratcher, being up 53 points as late as it was in the game, and as big of a margin that Oklahoma had in terms of the lead. But, uh, nice job by the Sooners. You really can't get better after playing a game like Kansas. The Jayhawks are just that bad of a team. But, again, they just they don't, they don't lack an effort. They just don't have the quality of talent uh, to compete with Oklahoma all game long. Um, the Big 12 was pretty interesting. Um, TCU loses at home to Tech. How about West Virginia losing for the first time this year to Oklahoma State? And Baylor loses their first game of the year. They get beat at uh, at Texas, heartbreaking fashion by one point. Big win for Charlie Strong. Again, I don't know if that'll be enough to, to have him keep his job, but at least it's something. It's a beginning maybe for Strong to try to, to uh, make sure that Texas finishes this season on a high note, and maybe the Texas alums and boosters, the people who really put the money into the program, uh, will give Charlie Strong another year. But that remains to be seen. And obviously, with Baylor losing, with West Virginia losing, now everybody else in the Big 12 is looking up at Oklahoma, the only unbeaten team in league play um, with a 5-0 and record. So for the Sooners, the Big 12 championship is theirs as long as they take care of business. Um, Iowa State shouldn't be um, that much of a problem, okay? Um, Iowa State's a little bit better than Kansas, but that's like saying, you know, you're going from driving a Pinto to – a geo. Not much of a difference at all. And in this case, Oklahoma should be able to blow past Iowa State. Just got to establish the tempo early. And I think the Sooners will be fine in spite of having a short week. Iowa State will have a short week as well. But uh, night games on Thursday, and I hate Thursday football. Big time. I mean, I mean, I hate it so much. But that has nothing to do with me 
you can thank ESPN, you can thank cable television for playing this game on a day that's not Saturday. Okay? I hate it. I wish they would get rid of Thursday football altogether. Save that for the NFL. But they're not going to listen to me. <laughs> and uh, nationally, you know, right now Florida State, Clemson playing one hell of a game. That's a, that's a pretty uh, close contest. Tennessee loses again. I mean, what's going on with them in Ohio State? They win but struggle against Northwestern. And Houston struggled today, but but did end up winning their game too. So it is interesting how this football season has gone along. And we thought you know, maybe Houston, maybe Ohio State uh, could be in the playoff. Ohio State could still get there. Of course, Houston can't. A college football season has so many chapters, and sometimes those chapters take on a different meaning and change the plot of the year altogether. But the Sooners, as expected, pretty much whipped Kansas, and they could have scored 84 if they wanted to. But uh, they'll take the win by the uh, score that they won by on Saturday night. They take care of business, 56-3, over the Jayhawks. Now Oklahoma all alone, first place in the Big 12. How long that happens, that's going to be up to the Crimson and Cream. Boomer Center.